All right, good morning, folks. Again, my name is Rachel Van. I am the new soybean extension specialist at NC State, started last year. And we're excited to talk today about some research that we're getting going, looking at optimizing maturity group selection over a wide range of planting dates. So I'll, Tristan Morris is a graduate student working on this trial that's gonna discuss the logistics more. But at some of our other sites, we have planting dates from mid-March through late July, maturity groups two through seven, where we're really trying to identify what is the best maturity group across this range of planting dates. But I just wanna introduce, why are we interested in doing this work? Across the United States, there's been a lot of interest in earlier planting of soybeans. Up in the Midwest, where those growers generally planted corn before soybeans, now a, a subset of growers are planting corn and soybeans at the same time, if not their soybeans before their corn. And we know we've got growers in pockets of North Carolina out here in the Blacklands, Northeast, Southern Piedmont that are really successfully producing early maturing soybeans planted early, but we're still trying to get a better understanding of what the best maturity group to plant across those early planting dates is. And additionally, there's interest in what is the best maturity group in a late planting situation, not just the standard double crop following wheat, but also we've got growers that are planting soybeans behind corn in the same season. I just talked to someone here this morning who said there was a grower that planted soybeans behind corn out here last week, or folks interested in planting soybeans behind potatoes. So at some of our other sites, we've got these late planting dates trying to identify what the optimum maturity group is. So when we talk about these maturity groups, two through sevens, you're often gonna hear the dialogue about indeterminate versus determinate varieties. So I just wanted to briefly run down uh, that vocab before we get into some of our preliminary results here. So an indeterminate variety is capable of producing vegetatively, so putting out new trifoliates out the apical meristem after the plant has started flowering. That's generally maturity groups 4.5 or less, and the majority of the soybeans produced in the Midwest and at higher latitudes. That should result in a longer flowering period, which could be advantageous uh, when you're going through stressors throughout the season. A determinate variety, which is generally a 5.5 or greater, will largely stop growing vegetatively once the plant starts flowering. Now we saw something interesting this year, which I'll discuss later, maybe that's not always going to be the case depending on environmental conditions. But those are kind of the rundown of indeterminate and determinate varieties. Maturity groups 4.5 to 5.5, you can find uh, both types of growth habits generally. So what controls flowering in soybeans? Length of night. Length of night, photo period, yeah. And, but one thing I wanna talk about this year is it's not just length of night, temperature interacts with length of night to control flowering. So we've seen some interesting stuff this year, which I'll discuss later. But I'd like to introduce Tristan, who is the graduate student managing this trial, so he can talk about the, the trial logistics. Yep, so here for this study, um, as you can kind of follow along here with some of these signs, on my left is our first planting date here in uh, April the 12th, and then on my right, is the second plant day here, uh, April the 30th. And so uh, with the, how this study is set up, as you move from left to right, you change in maturity groups. So there's seven different maturity groups, ranging from group two to a late seven. And then as you go from the front of the plots to the back, they change in seeding rate. So we're going from 75,000 all the way up to 175,000. Um, and then in our other locations, uh, as Rachel was talking about, we've uh, done more planting dates. Our goal was up to eight different planting dates, uh, ranging from mid-March all the way to early August. Um, we're located also in four other locations, up in Currituck. I have a spot in Sampson, down in Union County, and also over in Yadkin County. Thank you, Tristan. So, Again, Tristan mentioned at this site, we've got the April 12th planting date and the April 30th planting date. 
There's often this mentality that you're trying to get your soybeans to flower by the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year. I can tell you some of our varieties are maturity groups two, threes, and fours planted April 12th were uh, flowering on May 23rd, so well in advance of that. But remember, soybeans are looking for a critical length of night. The nights are longer both before and after the summer solstice. So we've seen some early flowering. And one of the really interesting things we saw this year is we had some determinate varieties. So sixes and sevens that were flowering in May. So I got nervous when I saw that. I called Dr. Dumphy. I said, do you think, do you think I got the plot map messed up or something? And he was saying, that because of the heat that we saw in May this year, it's likely that it pushed those determinate varieties into premature flowering. And so we actually had some growers in the same situation in the Northeast that were calling and saying, my determinate varieties have started flowering. Will they stop growing vegetatively? At this point, the soybeans were 12 to 13 inches tall. And we were concerned that if they exhibited the traditional determinate growth habit, that there wouldn't be very much vegetation. But this year we saw that those determinate varieties continued to produce vegetatively after they started flowering and then eventually terminated in a flowering racine. But that's something interesting that we saw kind of out of the norm. I talked to some different colleagues on the Southeast that were surprised, but also thought it was attributed to the excess heat. So that is something that can happen. We're gonna do this research over a couple years to see if we see uh, anything else that's interesting. Uh, from a seeding rate perspective, again, Tristan said we're looking at multiple seeding rates. When you come out to the field to plant these trials, really the work is hauling the planter across the state. So we wanted to drop multiple seeding rates while we were out here. Dr. Dunphy has a huge data set and Dr. Holzhauser as well on what's the optimal seeding rate as you delay planting. But a lot of the work, at least in the NC State Soybean Extension Program was done with determinate varieties. So one of the questions we wanna answer here is are seeding recommendations gonna be the same across planting with these different maturity groups? The answer is likely no, but we hope to get some more information on that this year. What we haven't talked about is what did we do in these trials from a pest control perspective? Well, all the seed that we planted out here was treated with a fungicide, insecticide, and nematicide. That's not necessarily what we're recommending for success in this system. We are trying to get more information about that. But what I can say is from a fungicide seed treatment perspective, at our early planting dates in Sampson County, which was mid to late March, we had one variety that was untreated. It was a mistake. We got it treated for the April plantings and beyond, but it was visually evident that that specific maturity group was not treated. You could see it from a stand reduction standpoint. So when you're planting into the soils at that site were 50 degrees when we were planting in those cool wet conditions, fungicidal seed treatments may be more important than what the data in our program has generally said from, from May and June plantings. We've got some studies where we're specifically looking at that this year. And before I forget, when we're talking about pest control, I'd like to thank BASF and Corteva who have donated products to these trials. We put out a pre-emergence herbicide at planting. We put out a post at R1. I will say something, you know, when you're planting this early, not necessarily at this site, obviously the growth is fantastic, but at some of those March and early uh, April plantings, those soybeans are moving slow, soil temperatures are cool. Weed control has been a challenge to stay on top of requiring several post applications at, at many of those sites. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but lastly, from a, a pest control perspective, these plots are getting sprayed between R1 and R3 with a fungicide, insecticide, and a post herbicide. So we know with this earlier planting system, a lot of my colleagues throughout the Midwest and into the Southeast recommend fungicides as a component of this early planting system. If you look at these plots down here, so this is this April 12th planting date. The maturity group three soybeans here, maturity group two on the end, those maturity group two soybeans will be ready for harvest in a week and a half. It's hot. 
it's wet. We could see some seed quality issues, so that's a component to consider. Um, we're looking forward to having a lot more information for you all on these trials. This is our first year. We've got to get yield data, and we look forward to discussing that at the winter meetings. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Holshauser, and he can expand based on his experience in Virginia and all these topics. But I'd first just like to thank my team. They've been traveling all over the state from mid-March to last week planting these trials, and we started harvesting in Sampson County yesterday. Our maturity groups, too, planted in mid-March. I can tell you the yields, the, the moisture was high, 30%, but uh, the yields were pretty poor. So, um, you know, you can go too early. There were drought conditions, and so our early planted soybeans don't look as good in Sampson County as some of our later plantings. But thank you to the team for all the hard work, and I'll turn it over to you. Before you leave, would you clarify the determinate indeterminate nature? Does the growth on determinate completely stop, or does it just the main stem stop? So with the determinate, let me grab some plants, which I pulled. With the determinate varieties, the flowering, it will terminate in this terminal raceme here, which is long at the top of the plant. There can be some continued vegetative growth off the lateral branching in some situations but versus an indeterminate variety, which will out the axillary bud, which here has a terminal raceme, can continue to put on trifoliates out of that. And if we just look at, this is a maturity group seven, planted April 30, you can see the pod load is non-existent. The plant has started flowering versus this maturity group three soybean, which was planted April 30, which is loaded down with pods. Now that plant still has a lot of potential to put on pods, but it's invested a lot of energy in a lot of vegetative growth at this point. So it would be our guess that when you're planting this early, a determinate late mid to late seven would not be the best bet. But last year I had a call from a grower asking, should I plant maturity group eight early? Apparently some of the high yielding growers do that. So it's definitely something we still get questions about. And to clarify, I thought I heard you say that some of the determinant or later maturing varieties started flowering, but they continued that growth of the main stem. Is that what I Yes. Said? So this is an it. Yes, this is an interesting phenomenon, and I talked to Larry Purcell and some of the other kind of experts in the Southeast about this. And Dr. Dumphy, not only did we see this in our research plot, so these determinate varieties, which we would generally expect a six or seven to flower after the summer solstice, were flowering in May on the main stem and still putting out trifoliates out of the apical meristem. So this was out of the ordinary. That's why I was concerned that we had some kind of seed mix up. But we also had this situation in a grower field in the Northeast. The grower was calling. He planted a maturity group six, April one. It started flowering and the plants were 12 inches tall. And so in both situations, we saw the plants continue to put on trifoliates despite this early flowering situation, which we think was driven by those two excessively hot weeks in May, pushed premature flowering, and the plant behaved differently than it normally would. But of the colleagues that I talked to, they said this is very out of the ordinary, but not impossible. The reason I asked that, when we do, when we plant a group five or later in an April planting, it does what we expect. It gets, stops growing very tall. I'm not saying it stops growing, but it, stops growing in height. It actually ends up with more leaf area than our early varieties. But that's one thing I've always seen when I plant determinate varieties too early, they'll shorten up. And I don't think that's good, but this is something that's out of the ordinary. There's... They kept growing. I'm not surprised they flower early because we've seen that more times than not when we planted five in April. And that's why I said never plant a I think I said it field day two weeks ago, never plant a determinant or group five or later in April. Wait till May to plant that because you can trigger that flowering too early, but I've never seen one start to Yeah, it can t they put on some additional height this year huh. and not excessive. They're still short relative. They're much shorter relative. Early? All these? 
So this specific situation was at Sampson. Looking at the flowering data here, these flowered July 1, July 11th. This was specific to those March plantings, okay. like very early plantings. Okay. So it was something interesting we observed. I thought I figured in your career you'd seen this at some point, but I've never seen it continue to grow after flowering. That's unusual. I mean, it wasn't excessive growth, but it did continue to grow in height. And one thing we need to understand: these they don't stop growing. Okay, they will branch out. And the later maturity is going to branch more than early as anyway, so they don't stop growing. Those branches will be about ten days later than the main stem anyway. That's why I always argued it was really. Flowering period is not a big deal because we and I've seen determinate flower the end of August after a drought. We just start flowering again, so it's maybe you're running into some of those strange things about determinate plants that we've been used to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think one of the things about these trials is there's not been a lot of this work done, so we're going to see trends over environmental conditions that are different than the ordinary, likely.